Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to this very special episode of Rushed Vibes. Are you mouthing me again? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just really excited to be here. I am Jessica, Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David. Mother loving rushing. <sighs> That's right, baby. I'm back in the flesh. Oh, he's back. Sometimes it's full of, it's full just, of energy. It's just better for him to be safe. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. If you always watch the last episode, I was I was severely under the weather. I was battling. I, uh, as my cousin Lamont said, I, I was having the equivalent of my Jordan flu game. Uh, I was not feeling well. Um, good news, it was not the COVID. Not the nineteen. Not the nineteen. Um, we're gonna chalk it up to food poisoning. So I will no longer be eating at Shake Shack. I will no longer be eating jalapeno peppers. Um, and I'm just going to stick with cigars and bourbon because that's and water in between. That's a well-rounded <laughs> diet. That's, um, that's what yeah. they have on the food pyramid. It is. It is. Um, today is a very special day. This evening. It is, is a very indeed. special evening. And not only because we've already suffered about three technical <laughs> technical issues trying to record this episode, um, but this will be the first episode of Mompreneur March. Yep, yep. And we've been teasing this for the last couple episodes. Uh, we have several, um, I'll call it, call them just bad mama jamma bad mama mamas jamma. who are the rock of their family, but also about their business. About that business. And um, our first guest uh, epitomizes that to a, to a T. Uh, we consider her family. We uh, were first friends, she and I. Uh, we're acquaintances. Uh, acquaintances. No, you guys are first awkward acquaintances. <laughs> awkward. Uh, we 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 might get into that. We may not. We don't have all night. Uh, but we we all we have stories for days. Uh, so it's always fun whenever we have her around. Even better that we can have her on the podcast to share her story, then also share about a lot of the great things that she's doing in her community, uh, both digital and um, uh, physical. So she uh, is not does not live in the Charlotte area, but she used to. Um, her and her husband and and her th- their three children live in the Raleigh Durham area. Uh, so she's grandfathered in, so still local, local mom, doing local mom things. Yeah. And I think she was born in Charlotte. She was. Like Charlotte's her yeah, stomping, she, yeah. it's her stomp, Hometown. stomping grounds. <laughs> Stom- <laughs> stomping grounds, man. So uh, our guest is Jacynthia Bailey. Woo woo. She is a Jesus lover, wife, and mom. And then mompreneur, I'm going to go ahead and add that into her bio for her. So not only is she a mom, meaning she already has like a million different jobs, with three children, a husband who is also a pastor, supporting him with the church and then involved in church activities. And then she also has um, her other activities that she's involved in. Um, she has, she co-hosts a podcast, Married and Having Fun. We've shouted them out a couple of times yes. on one of our favorite podcasts to listen to. Um, she is a retreat host. She and my lovely wife, Jess- Jessica, will be um, partaking in a retreat here in Rush Vibe Studios yes. <laughs> uh, this weekend. Um and she is a marriage and women's empowerment coach. Uh, she is also a realtor. So, like, she just does a bunch of stuff. And she's just a badass woman. And she's just bad, bad butt woman. I don't want to cuss. This is a Christian home. <laughs> you cuss in, like, every episode of this podcast. Uh, um, what was I going to say? Uh, when I think of grit, when I think of grime, when I think of straight hustle, like, uh, Jacinthia is definitely one of the, the first people who come to my mind. Um, it's just amazing all the things that she's done and been able to do while, like I said, just, you know, being the rock of, rock just of her never family, skipping a beat. never skipping a beat, never hear her complain. She just goes about it and gets things done. So, um, I think that's a pretty good intro. We don't want to go too long. We want to save the bulk of the, the podcast for her, allow her to introduce herself. So, uh, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to bring this at the end. So y'all not go anywhere and we're going to have our drinks too, because yeah, we got we're thirsty. Yeah, we're thirsty. <laughs> all right. We'll be right back. All right, so we are back. Rush vibes, healthy vibes, healthy vibes, <laughs> no food poisoning vibes. Uh, with our first guest, our very special guest, who we just talked up, Mr. Hi, Cynthia hi. Bailey. Welcome to Rush Vibes. Woo! I should do my Nancy <laughs> Pelosi clap. <laughs> the shade I clap. I am so honored to be here. We are honored to have you. And uh, I'm now reading your shirt, and your your the statement on your shirt is so. I propose. Yes, it's perfect for Aww. a perfect shirt. 
Thanks. for you because you you really are you are a warrior who always ends up victorious speaking of shirts i am wearing a shirt that you gave me at our first retreat Daughter of the King. so i do and we had a little um, impromptu photo shoot so i saved this shirt to wear for your presence so i'm very glad to have you here yeah um, I'm assuming my shirt got lost in the mail. So <laughs> you got a hat, remember? Oh yeah, that's yes, too small. You did. It's too small for my head because I got I got dreadlocks now, so I it can't fit for a, for a season. For a season oh, when I have my locks my baby locks. Because it had the expander on it, it was so, the other day. Solace took it off his head, and she was wearing she was wearing yeah, it. If it fits Solace better than it than it fits Aww. me, um, I still have mine. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about in the intro how you are more family than friend now. Um, how you and I were acquaintances before we all became friends and then ultimately family. Um, but just how you wear a lot of hats, how you're what we call a mompreneur. This is a mompreneur month. Jackie of all trades. Um, Jesus lover, wife, mom, and then the multitude of, of things that spiritual you... Spiritual coach. Spiritual coach. The <laughs> things that you have your, have your hands in. So um, we just want to dive into that and hopefully, you know, just... Your, your wisdom, your experiences, the things that you, you bring to the table, the, the, uh, the intangibles that you possess. Uh, you can kind of talk about that and how that's kind of driven you to do the things that you're doing. Um, I don't know when you sleep. I don't know how much you sleep. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but I, we both just admire all that you've kind of been able to, to put your hands on and, and build, um, build up. So I'm really excited for you to talk a little bit about that. But um, so I figured... You know, we should touch on our origin story. Yeah, for sure. So, um, it's a small world. Very small world. After all. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jacinthia and I knew each other before I met Jessica, who I've known for 10 years. You sure? I'm, I'm, I'm rolling with 10. Okay. 10, 10 seems like a good, <laughs> like right. a good number. Uh, I've known for 10 years. So, uh, just Cynthia and I knew each other through a mutual friend who, um, I went to high school with, and then, uh, she went to college in Raleigh, which is where, uh, she and Cynthia met and they were roommates. Mm-hmm. Hence, I would kind of see Jacinthia um, as I was coming and going, um, to Raleigh. But then I didn't see her for a while. Um, so fast forward a few years, uh, after college, Jessica and I are dating, Jessica was working, um, who were you working for? Anheuser-Busch. Anheuser-Busch. So she would, she would throw, uh, promotions, um, and, and have events, e- events at uh, certain bars. buy people beer. Buy people beer <laughs> at, at bars, <laughs> broke down uh, here, here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And, um, one of my, I played football in college and one of my former teammates, uh, was living in Charlotte, working in Charlotte yep. by the name of Ian Bailey. There's. You should be noticing a trend here if, you, if you're paying attention, Bailey. So uh, Ian had Ian and I reconnected. We were we were kind of cool in college, and then he did a, he did some oh, traveling overseas, right? Or, yeah, he lived overseas. Yeah, um, he, he was did? he was going around doing like some internships and, and whatnot. So internationally, he did. nobody told me this. I think it was international. Maybe if well, if it was international, he was definitely traveling around the country. Yeah, he was traveling okay. around the country. Okay, was yeah. that internationally was the teenage marketing? years. Yeah, was that, that was when teenage he was years for that marketing company. Yeah. Okay, he did tell yeah. me about that. Yeah, yeah he, he was, was doing. To refer me for a job. Yeah, he was. He didn't. Okay this isn't about that. you. Um, he was doing. He was doing. He was doing a lot. Um, so he once he got back to Charlotte, you know, he and I reconnected, and then obviously I was dating Jess, so we would we would hang out on occasion because when Jessica threw her events, anyone who was with her got free food, got free beer, or whatever. It was a good life. So um, I'm going to precursor this by saying, Ian, I'm not trying to get you in trouble. I'm just trying to tell the, the complete story. So when tell it true, he he was hanging out with Jessica and I. He was he was dating a woman, um, but he said there was this, who shall not be named. Who shall not be named? Mm-hmm. Um, and then he's, we, we but cut, nah, he, I don't even remember her name. He okay. said there I was, was like, we cut people. He said there was I another one. <gasps> Let me do the bit. Do the bit. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to do the bit. Um, he, was, he said there was another woman who he was, he had, he was talking to. He said, but she had a little bit of baggage. He was like, I don't know. Cause she got a kid. So I was like, on top of other baggage, it's not just the kid. Yeah, that was the baggage. So I was like, me and Jess were like, nah, bro. Mm. <laughs> like you don't want to mess. Mm. You don't want to mess with it. You young. You don't want to. You don't. You're you don't want. Against me. You don't. You want to bring that we kind of drama know. into we your didn't life. Know. This is why forgiveness so, culture needs to be a right, thing. Right, right, right. So we gave him the advice. You know, he did with it. What, 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 what he did. 
And so we just had those in an event. Uh, what bar was that? It was um, Tin oh, Roof. Tin Roof. Tin Roof. Look at Okay. That's that mompreneur mom <laughs> right. brain so right there. So just, just as on the event at Tin Roof, you know, we put feelers out. I invite some of my people. She invites some of her people. Ian said he was coming. So Ian walks Actually, in. Actually, it was all your people. Just FYI. All my people. <laughs> That's right. You don't have any friends. I have plenty, so but all your Ian, people showed up. Ian walks in and he has, you know, the beautiful a lady on his arm. Him. And it was, it was Cynthia. Now, I know, obviously, I know Cynthia now when I see her. But at the time, I was like, man, she looks familiar, but I couldn't. I couldn't place it. So I told her when she walked in, I was like, man, you look familiar. She was like, yeah, you look familiar too. And then that should have been my red flag. (laughs) And that was kind of it. So a little bit of the night passes and I'm the kind of person who, when I, when I'm trying to pinpoint something, when I'm trying to remember where I know somebody from, where I know a movie from or an actor or whatever, it literally drives me crazy until I can figure it out. So everybody's kind of um, socializing at the table and I'm just sitting here. Like my brain is just been, I'm like, where do I know her from? Where do I know her from? And she co-signs that she recognizes him from somewhere yeah. as well. And then all of a sudden it comes to me. Let's let's set the scene. It's when the it's it's it was conveniently when the DJ transitioned song. So <laughs> so that it, we were at like an eight foot table, but we were we were still pretty intimately close. So if someone said something on one end, you'd hear it. So the song transition starts. David starts swinging his arm in the air. And what do you say? I was like, oh, I was at your wedding. But he said it. Very loudly, creating a very awkward and uncomfortable situation yeah. for everyone at the table, inc- yeah. especially Jacynthia, who was on a date with Ian. It was like my third date. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, seeing as you two are still married, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and assume that I didn't, I didn't, you know, rupture botch anything. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't botch anything. Yeah. Um, and Cynthia handled it well. Did, she kind of took it. Was there a it. conversation after that? Like when you you guys left that night? Yeah, he was just like, "Yo, he called you out <gasps> at the table." <gasps> I was like, "I know." Yeah, yeah, it was. <sighs> and he was sober. <laughs> That's the sad thing. Yeah, there was, was no. There's was nothing no. we can. We can't. We can't pull a T pain and blame the alcohol. He was sober. No. But it was yeah. just, it was that light bulb moment. You're like, yeah. oh yes, I figured it out. I was so, so I was Eureka. so proud. Of, I was so proud of myself because it was, it was literally a struggle. Yeah. Um, and it was out of place because I'm used to seeing Cynthia. I see her in Raleigh, and not that Raleigh and Charlotte are so far apart. It was just she was out of, she was out of the the normal setting of, of which I would normally see her. <laughs> Although you got married in Charlotte, so maybe that doesn't really, that doesn't really fly. But um, yeah, I was I was really excited. So yeah, that was kind of embarrassing. So I had to apologize. I feel like I apologize like every three or four times I see her. I apologize and, and pretty regularly up. too. Um, I'm because totally over there was, it. yeah, there was, there was no malice. It's, it's a funny story. Like it's a it funny is. origin story, it but is. it's still like, dang, David, like <laughs> you have no social etiquette at all. Yeah, I don't. And I'm awkward though. You are. You but are. Everybody but knows it's okay. that now. Like, oh, I've know. come to accept it. Yeah. yeah everybody knows it. Yeah. And it's not, and it's, and I'm awkward. And I think people uh, feel like I'm just like, like really like, rude, like rude and, and disconnected and, 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 you're not. and I'm you're not just awkward. I'm just awkward. Yeah. And you know, I people, feel like awkward is the new. I, I imagine I've, I've like offended so many more people than I'm actually aware of. Oh, you, you offend a lot of people. And so I guess he was always telling me how she has to, for him. has to apologize. <laughs> I'm like, for me. Oh, he's, he's nice. Like, it, it's almost like I'm a battered woman. I'm like he's nice. He's, he's really, he's really good. Like <laughs> yeah. he's just, he's a good guy. You just, yeah. You just have to get on the right side so, of him. So uh, this isn't this isn't, this isn't about, about me. you. This Sorry, isn't about me. This My is mompreneur, <laughs> mompreneur mom march. Okay, so now that we have your our origin story out of the way, mm-hmm. so Jacynthia from Charlotte, right? Born and raised. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Not a lot of people can say they're born and raised in Charlotte. Yeah, you guys are mm-hmm. a rare commodity. Yeah, Charlotte's mm-hmm. definitely a um, melting pot. It's of, a transit city. Yeah, yeah. people who have. I went to not from here. high school at North Mech. Shout out North Mech. Vikings. Go Vikings. I my, uh, my, my little adopted, my oh, big little where, adopted that, brother, that Alan, works. He works. Oh, I don't Aww. know if I. You're always blurting out people's place of oh, employment. Sorry. I don't know if we're supposed to do that. But he don't care. He's fine. I mean. <laughs> I mean, shout that's out. what LinkedIn is for. I mean, yeah, LinkedIn, you can get everybody's information on shout social out, media. Shout out to so Alan. It's a quick Google search. Um, but And you and your, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Mm-hmm. No, just do it. Uh, you you and Ian, act, your husband now, actually went to high school yeah, together, right? Yeah, we went right? to high school together. That's where we met. Is that what you're going to say? 
According to him, <laughs> I think so. I love it. We dated for two weeks. They're they're high mild school. high school sweethearts. Mm-hmm. If if those people who reach like dislocate their shoulders to reach and connect stories, <laughs> you can make them <laughs> high school sweethearts because and and she she was there was they were discussing this on her podcast. She was discussing it. Um, she had a great podcast with um a guest and she was discussing her relationship with him and how it was two weeks and you remembered none of it. Yeah, and he. Like if he has it on the in this this mental prize possession box, and it's got a lock and key, and he just he adores the two weeks that they were together, and she's he just like it out all the time. She's like, bro, I don't even I don't know you. <laughs> that's a little that's a little discouraging. I didn't know I didn't know I you. It's who, sad. but right. it, it's still it's still a beautiful story. It you is. can still say you're high school sweethearts because yeah. you did date in high school, yeah. so the heart was connected. Yeah. the The only thing I do remember about that is that I did go to church with him. His dad was a pastor at the time, and I remember going to his youth group. And then I vaguely remember talking to him on the bus, and that's really it. Mm. You're really into him, huh? <laughs> he, re- he really, he really. Just- he says that I broke up with him, saying that he was boring. And I, I can like, see I that. Don't remember that conversation. I, you really? Do you remember dating him? Yeah, he. I remember looking at him and thinking he was cute, but then once we got into it, he was awkward. He had just gotten back from the Netherlands. Um, oh, so and he they're was, like, awkward trying to out there. No assimilate. offense. Yeah. Nether- what are the people from the Netherlands called? Oh, oh. I don't know, but... Um, da- no, they're not Danish. What are the... Ne- they're- oh, I'm going to Google they that. Do, they speak Dutch. If you Dutch. know what... Uh, people who live in the Netherlands are referred to go ahead and drop that in the comments for those of you who are watching on YouTube. Um, they do because Jessica is, is struggling here. Um, yeah, fine. Bye. While she's pulling that up, oh, um, are they Dutch? Because they do. You're right. They do yeah. speak Dutch in the Netherlands. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have a great grandfather who's Dutch. Um, oh yeah, they're Dutch. Of course you do. Oh okay. I mean colonizers. <laughs> Allegedly, I have Dutch, Portuguese, and Scottish. Okay. Did it show? Come through, no. twenty three sh- and me. It right. showed in my in, in when I get it when I'm at the beach. Like I can burn. I burn. I can burn. Melanin. Don't be fooled by melanin. Melanin can I burn, burn too. too. Yeah. So I, mm-hmm. I. That's what I've been told. Um. Anyway. So we're we're we're. <laughs> We're like all over the spectrum. So Jacinthia is from Charlotte, Mm -hmm. born and raised. She is an amazing woman. Uh, She is a wife. She is a mother. She is a first lady. She, she, and she's also an entrepreneur. And we've talked about how many times, any, every time we talk, you're kind of always in a new venture. Mm -hmm. And it's not like that annoying person who it's like, Hey, I've got this new product. Like, let's (laughs) like, do you like, are you like the car warranty people? You're not, you're not one of those. You're just always, you're like always charging yourself and always looking for something new that, that, and it always fits you. It's never, Aww, it's never uncomfortable. So when I first yeah. met you, you were with Mary Kay mm-hmm. and, and there's a funny story behind that. So after the event where David embarrassed everybody, um, including himself, <laughs> she, I actually, I went home and slept very good that night. I slept she very well. reached out me. to me and, and I, I, I completely botched the situation. She was like, Hey, you know, I, I can, we can do a little spa day, invite some friends. And I guess I missed the invite some friends part of the conversation. So she comes over with like a whole Mary Kay set up and it was just me at my apartment. And she was like, Oh yeah, I, I, I mentioned it that you could have had people here. And I was like, Oh that's what you meant. So See, I, when I first met Jacinthia, there goes J- JC just taking stuff in stride. When I yeah. first met Jacinthia, that was how that. I mean, when we first really got acclimated, and it was like a week or two later. Yeah. Um, and then from there, we started going to church together. So our relationship, took off. Yeah. yeah, our relationship grew really, really quickly. We, when I was working for Walmart, like we went to Knoxville together. Like we've done, we've had some fun times. We, I can't wait for the world to open up for us to do some more. You know what's funny? Um, my son, I ran across a picture, old picture of us from church, and we kind of had on similar outfits. And I remember that day so well because my son, who is now 12, he, yep. he was coming up to you, calling you mommy. He did. So we were we were in church. <laughs> the lights were off. He walked up to me. He was like, mommy, I need to use the bathroom. And she was right next to me. And we were both wearing, I think, like green floral dresses. Yeah. Uh, so he, I was like, 
Okay, because she was in the she was in the spirit, so I'm not gonna be like, hey, your kid needs to use the bathroom. So I took him to the bathroom and I went like I let him go in the stall. I waited out there, and I think eventually she opened her eyes and realized I was gone and he was gone. So she came to the bathroom. So he comes out of the stall and he looks and he's like, wait, what's what's going on? You mean my mom? So, mama, so he mama. was like, wait, who's my, why is this woman here? Who did I come to the bathroom with? Mama, mama. But yeah, so the, we, we were mistaken. We were mistaken. Yes. For, Elias mistaken us. So Hilarious. we've always kind of had, I feel like we've been somewhere where someone thought we were sisters. Um, well, my we, grandmother, I told her, I was like, oh, I'm going over to my friend Jess's house. And she says, oh, that's the girl from church that looks like you, right? Uh-huh. You guys look so much alike. We like, do. Thanks. So we're just going to, we're just going to start we're just <laughs> telling Blame people. It. I mean, we are sisters, but David, we're just. do you think we look alike? I'm going <laughs> so to, I'm going to pass. To, to <laughs> our point, to, to, to clarify that we wore similar hairstyles. Like yeah, we, we did. It was like yeah, the, big, time, yeah. the big sew-in, sew-in season where it was like the long <laughs> Brazilian wavy blow it out and all so I, yeah. I could see I could I definitely see similarities in us there are some pictures and I feel like when you're around someone a lot you tend to look like them yeah and I stumbled upon some old pictures of us and we actually do like there was a selfie we took and I was like we we do look alike we yeah. do look alike in this picture so um that's that's just some funny a funny memory <laughs> that we we have and we have millions of those that we can go on to so um I will say we were with her the weekend we got pregnant with Solace. So Solace is kind of her. And her I've been husband. there for all of the oh. major rushing you, milestones. You really have. You yeah. you are a pillar to the rushing empire for which we build. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to talk about you. So I'm glad you finally remembered. <laughs> It's just so, you know, certain people, it's so easy to segue. Like, your conversations are almost, no offense, like schizophrenic in time. Like, they're just like, like oh, yeah. we're talking about this, then we switch to this, then we switch to this, then we come back. And then it's stressful, yeah. but it's it's also exhilarating. The words and opinions uh, expressed by Jessica are not indicative of the views <laughs> if, of us if here at Rush Vibes, of the collective here at Rush Vibes. <laughs> Where did you learn that? If you-, <laughs> you watch too much, too much news. So, anyway... <laughs> So let's circle back to why uh, I, you are here. You are me, a mom mm-hmm. and you are an entrepreneur. So I want to. You're going to do the bit? Put a pin in that. Um, we, we mentioned that we listen to Married and Having Fun. One of our favorite, one of our favorite podcasts Aww, to listen hey. to. We listened to two episodes back to um, back this week. Aww. And I paused and one and he was like, did you turn it off? Yeah, she had the nerve to try to switch it to her headphones. I'm like, chick, I'm listening too. <laughs> Um, and in your in your intro, uh-huh. Mary having fun. Go download it. By the way, available on all your major uh, podcast platforms, and I'll link it in the uh, YouTube and description, on Instagram, and the uh, and the show notes, and they're on Instagram. All that stuff will be um, in the in the places where you know to find it. Anyways, Down there. Uh, you you mentioned that uh, you're on your second marriage. Mm-hmm. Like that's out. That's literally one of the first things you say when someone downloads your podcast and listens yeah. to it. So talk a little about, a little bit about, um, if you don't mind, um, what that was like for you, um, getting married. Cause you're relatively young, right? Yeah. I believe, um, what that first marriage was like for you and, um, not to compare your husband's cause that, mm-hmm. that wouldn't be fair, but just kind of compare like the woman you are now compared to, you know, who you were then and the what that transition has been like for you. Yeah. <laughs> because I think a big part of, you know, obviously we're focusing on the mompreneur part of your, your life, mm-hmm. but I think a bit, a huge part of that is obviously, um, the marriage component. So, yeah. So one of the reasons that I allude to my first marriage in the intro of the podcast is literally because I had, I still had a little bit of shame around it. Um, you know, I had this great idea to talk about marriage with my girlfriend and we really wanted to talk about all the things that encompasses marriage. And I was like, Oh, but will people want to listen to what I have to say? Cause I've been married before. Like I'm on my second. And what I've really found is that sharing your story is the most empowering thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, I really wanted, I wanted people to know that our show is not just for the newlyweds or people who've been my friend. She's been married for 25 years or, you know, it's not even just for married women or married men. It's for everybody. There's something to learn within all of it. So I just, I wanted to share 
a little bit about me off the off the bat to say I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's why I allude to that. But I'm very thankful for my first husband. We um, are friends. We're great friends. We co-parent together. Um, We probably talk on the phone. We talk on the phone like weekly. Um, And there was a time where we'd have, I mean, we'd have conversations and Ian just would be like my current husband. We'd be like, okay, bye (laughs) y'all. But, you know, needless to say that what I've come to realize through all of that is, you know, just because you get a divorce doesn't mean that you might end your damage it on paper, anything. but you still like, you still have all those memories, all those, you know, things that you went through with that person. And so it, for me, it's been very good and therapeutic to work through it and to be on the other side and even to be able to have the relationship with him to, lament and say that I'm sorry and, and work through some things with him has been good too. So. Question for you. Yeah. Do you think your current marriage would be as successful without the lessons you learned from your previous marriage? <laughs> no. <laughs> that was easy. Um, yeah. I, there, there was a lot that I learned about myself within the first marriage and I, and I always tell people, um, I could have stayed married. Um, if I was willing to have stuck in there and really did, do the work on myself. Mm -hmm. I could have stayed married. Um, I had a wonderful husband. He was very loving, very kind, patient and gentle. He was 14 years, my senior. And, um, it it was great. I was really the screw up. I, I just had a lot of baggage, a lot of things from my childhood that I didn't deal with. And it came spewing out on him. And, um, I learned a lot from that and I learned a lot about myself. So, um, lucky Ian and uh my ex-husband Scott he used to tell Ian all the time this person that you're getting here (laughs) I ain't get that like oh (laughs) so yeah what was the most important thing you learned about yourself coming out of your first marriage um what was your biggest lesson how important it is to heal Mm. yeah how important it is to heal and to um surrender because um you know, I was carrying all this weight, all this, all these things, all this hurt around. And it really affected even the way that I saw myself. Um, and it affected the way that how I showed up in my relationship and, and what I brought to the table. So um, that's the biggest lesson that I've learned, yeah, for sure. So I, too, am a mom. Mm-hmm. And what? I ha- <laughs> what? And I have definitely looked to you and our age gap is not that big, but I, I definitely look at you as a big sister and you've experienced a lot of life things. So I've seen, I've seen you juggling work and juggling motherhood and you do, you do both so gracefully. Mm -hmm. How do you balance? Because the average mom is, is, is a wife. Again, the the average Mm -hmm. is a wife. And then a mom and then probably works. And then, you know, eventually remembers that she's a human being and yeah. takes care of herself. Yeah. How do you balance juggling all those different hats, where, working all those different jobs? And when do you recognize, okay, I need to step back? Yeah. Um, so for me, um, number one, I'm highly organized. I love organization. But number two, which is probably the number one is, and it's the biggest thing is I've always assessed seasons that I'm in and I know when a season is up or when I need to cut something off. Mm -hmm. So for instance, um, my husband's a pastor and we had a church. We actually had two churches and I was very involved, like probably too involved, um, but I really felt like we were going, we were going into this and it was his first time doing this. And I really felt the need to help him. Um, that season ended in June of 2020 and he got a new church. And so of course, right off the bat, he was expecting me to jump in, do this, do that. And I said, you know what? No, I actually think that I'm going to sit down and just, I'll go to church um, on Sundays, but I'll assess, give me a few months and I'll assess and see where I want to provide 
mm-hmm. anything, you know, what areas. And he was really taken back by that, but um, I knew that that's what I needed. And so even, I mean, we were two months in and people were coming to me, oh, could you teach children's church and could you do this? And I'm like, no. you know, Thank um, you. I'm good. Yeah, no, not right you. now. No, but no, thank you. Back to not you, my Matt. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, so um, I think that in when you have a lot of things to juggle, knowing your priorities and what you want to say yes to and what you want to say no to, and not saying yes to something because it makes someone else, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, happy yeah. or it makes someone mm-hmm. else their load easier. Um, that's that's the biggest thing that gets me through and in, in all the hats that I wear. Yeah. So speaking of all hats, um, I think we're going to take a quick break okay. and then we're going to jump into um, all the things you're kind of dabbling in as an entrepreneur. So awesome. we will be right back. Right back. And, and we, we're back. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you were going to do that. That's my normally bad. what, that's normally my job. Well, <laughs> as a woman, work. as a mom, not quite. Oh, so it's, it's mompreneur money. Um, so you're just gonna I, take over. Okay. I'm showing how the woman really is the head of the household. <laughs> is the <laughs> neck of the household while the man is the head of the household. She recognizes where she needs to fit in to make stuff happen. Mm. Anyway, so we are back with the glorious Jacynthia Bailey. And as a mom, a younger mom, not by much, um, I, I'm really curious as to what We've kind of touched on your entrepreneurial side. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know in the past you've mentioned, you know, your mom was very entrepreneurial. And that's kind of where your inspiration comes from. How, with that being your inspiration, what else kind of drives you? Because you're always involved in something. You're not a rester. I don't know if you sleep. I don't know if you're a vampire (laughs) and you, you know, you just lay upside down up at at night but you're just always on the go but you never seem tired you never seem burned out Mm -hmm. you're you're almost supernatural (laughs) in in the ways of which you're able to juggle all the components of life so i guess i'm curious you know what keeps you going yeah so speaking of my mom yeah my mom she was uh 16 when she had me um so i i was i grew up as like her best friend or something, a kid raising a kid. But uh, the one thing, she died when I was 10, but the one thing that I truly remember about her is that my mom, she had, so I was always with my mom. Literally, she put me in a school district near her job. She worked worked for um, a government agency that um, approved people's disabilities like whether they got a disability check or whatever so you'd have to like literally in her office there were judges and lawyers and like it was it was an awesome time for me growing up because I was exposed to so many different people and so many different things um but I would watch her work during the day um because I would go there as soon as I got out of school and then um you know, we'd have different things that, so my mom had a full-time job. She also worked for the church and they paid her. Um, she was like the secretary and the, I don't even know all the things that she did, (laughs) but we were always doing something for the church. And then she also had a traveling, um, like convenience shop in her trunk, which was like, I, I don't. She was selling she's CDs. The o, she was the OG hustler. She was selling CDs and DVDs and stuff. Like a, All get the trench coat and like pickles and candy pickles. and like it was it was all the thing. Like we would, uh, it was I would go and watch her like buy these big boxes of candy and then like sell them for and she would talk to me she'd be like okay so I'm buying this for this much Mm -hmm. and this is how much I can make off of this box and like that's how she would talk to me as a kid and so my eyes were always just like wow and she would show me her money and and she was always doing something and I just remember people always coming to my mom for solutions um Mm -hmm. and she was definitely a problem solver um, so I, I, I picked that up at a young age, but as for me learning how to juggle it, uh, I love that my mom kept me in the mix. So I, I do keep my kids in the mix mm-hmm. a lot. Um, I tell them, oh, mommy's doing this. Um, 
when I was really heavy into real estate, my kids came with me. You know, they, I'd be like, mommy's going to show this house. And, you know, sometimes they would behave, sometimes they wouldn't. <laughs> my clients were um, really great to say, oh, yeah, you're a mom. And they love my kids and stuff like that. But um, keeping my kids in the mix has been a lifesaver for me. And then I'm highly organized. Um, I don't get into anything that is not a passion for me. Mm -hmm. So currently I um, sell noonday jewelry. Well, I which do is that. beautiful. I, I love their jewelry. I love their jewelry. But I the bigger piece of it that I love is that it actually gives jobs to women all around the world. So like they're in Africa and um, India and all these places where it's hard for women to find work. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of women are sold into prostitution or different things to try to provide for their families or help their families. And so they have these plants there where women can come and work and make jewelry and they get a wage for that. So I, I love that. And that's part of the reason why I decided to add that onto my plate because I, like, I was like, I like what they're doing. And this is something I look for things that are easy to run. I can have a whole website there and advertise and wear the jewelry myself. Mm -hmm. And then people are like, oh, I like what you have on. I'm like, oh, yeah, here, you can buy it here. Um, and that's something that I don't even have to touch. It's shipped out to them and it hands my hands are off. Yeah. So that's an easy thing for me. Um, what else? I don't know. You and I, I don't know the parent brand to this, but I feel like I've seen you do a lot of advertising for this oh brand. for the shirts oh my gosh yeah so the shirt that you have on daughter of the king i am an ambassador for um her name is jenny weaver and honestly i added that to my plate because i just love what she was doing for the kingdom i was like this woman is fierce and um you know, she gives me my shirts for free and we have, <laughs> we have um, just this beautiful love for Jesus. And so I, yeah, I added that to my plate because it was an alignment, uh-oh, alignment with uh, the things that I love. It happens. How does that, do your earring just fall off? For those who are not it watching, my sometimes. earring just, it just um, fell out of my ear. It was tired. So uh, which one of your ventures takes up the most of your time would, would it be the podcast is that fair to say honestly are we talking ventures that make money or like um, ven like just life in general what takes the most well i, I, I would say for that. anything that would fall under your entrepreneurial umbrella oh because okay. i mean any <laughs> i mean the podcast i would imagine probably isn't bringing any revenue but that's that's normal for most businesses, oh, right? Yeah, 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 for like the first couple of years. So well, um, I would, I would, my, my question podcast, pertains to everything. I, I think that my podcast brings in money on a back end. It's mm. not like direct money, but it is a way that um, women find me. It's a mm. way that couples find us. Sure. And it's a stream. Yeah. So or a we, uh, funnel. Yeah, a funnel. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, Coaching is a huge part of what I do now. So um, the podcast, honestly, it doesn't take that much time for me. I've It's invigorating and it's fun for me. Mm -hmm. I literally put it in my schedule. This is when I'm recording. Mm -hmm. This is when I'm editing. And so I don't really feel like it's a huge component of my time. Oh. I don't think... I don't know when you when you said that the first thing that came to my mind of what takes the most of my time I was gonna say my husband. Um, <laughs> I would classify him as go. a so classify. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't classify Ian as a venture. Um, but um, husband, this is confirmation but, that husbands are very time consuming. They are, and They're she has three needy. kids. <laughs> she has three kids, but her husband, Ian, we love you. <gasps> I'm just putting I that out there. I do love him. I do love him. But I, I do have to put a lot of work into that. So that that's probably my biggest time consumer there. But I love him and it's worth the work. So, yeah. so that, well, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Because oh. I had the last question. Um, so one thing that and, and if anyone who follows you, 
they re- they recognize quickly how transparent you are mm-hmm. and you're very comfortable about talking about the importance of intimacy in marriage and relationships so i guess i'm very curious where your passion for marriage comes from and mm-hmm. also your comfort with being so transparent because people will easily say they're transparent and oh i'm an open book and all of the <laughs> all of the sentiments that come with it but then it's like when you touch on a certain subject it's like oh that's raunchy or oh don't say that yeah. so where do you find your 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 comfort and your confidence to just be like hey this is like it's kind of like oh we all poop like when people yeah. act like oh no that's yeah, not something i do uh yeah. how do you how do you find that every day because if you follow your pages and engage with you you recognize how quickly and easily you are about being just like this is me this is life so where do you find that from um honestly i think that i in an honest i don't truly know if everything that I share, I'm not really sure that my husband is like, okay with it. I think that he's become okay with it because he has seen the transformation in me Mm -hmm. over time. And so really my passion comes from that, like living this life and really transforming myself. I was having a conversation with my dad the other day and he was like, my God, girl, you were like, he was like, you're not even the same person that you were six months ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I know dad. And it's so like, it's so invigorating to um, just constantly be growing and changing. And so I think maybe that's why my husband is okay with us talking about things, but being on that journey and feeling the freedom and the transformation of that, that's what makes me so open. That's why I'm like, everybody needs to get some of this because, um, and I just want to share everything even down to, um, sex and all that stuff. Sex. <laughs> With a KS, not that X. That K- sex. Filthy. What? <laughs> you know what's that funny? <laughs> I, I'm going to just say this about you two. Okay. I'm going to say this. Say it. Um, Speak. <laughs> I, I've known y'all for a long time. It's probably about 10 years now. Going on 10. Maybe, maybe not 10. Maybe like 9, 8. You can nine, round it up. Let's say 9, 10. 10. Yeah. Let's, let's round okay. it up. Carry on. And I cannot count how many times on my hand I don't think that we've had a sex conversation. I mean, I know y'all in have sex because y'all got babies. We, that's how many conversations we've had, or like we have our um. Y'all aren't y'all are not like let's talk about sex. I'm very much. <laughs> <laughs> I I I think between the two of us, I'm more. I'm the one who's going to say something reckless that'll have David uncomfortable. <laughs> But because yeah. I recognize his comfort level, yes. I've toned down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so and I, that happens in marriage. It does. Yeah. It, it definitely does. Because I'm one of those people. I recognize that two He's people. He's so quiet right now. He is. Like two people <laughs> can't be. You, can, in my opinion, you can't have two big personalities in one relationship. That's, That's overwhelming. True. So some, I, I think, I have the type of personality where it's like, if he had a big personality, I would, I would stand back Mm -hmm. so that he could showcase but Mm -hmm. because he's very much so laid back and easygoing i'll be big i don't mind talking about my (laughs) so it's funny because we'll have conversations where he'll like like hang out with his guy friends or something and i'm like oh so like what do you guys talk about like you you, you, you know talk about (laughs) about sex talk about like all that stuff and he was like oh we we, like talked about bourbon i'm like what (laughs) Like, we talked it. about we talked about Jesus. We talked about fried fish, like like <laughs> ra- like the most random thing. We talked and about it's the like Lord. Me, when I'm with when I'm with a girlfriend, when I'm in that environment, like the the retreat we went to in November, I was like, it be like this, this, <laughs> this. Put it on that. Turn around this. Flip over here. I, I like I. <laughs> I if like, you're in my girlfriend's circle, we're talking about we, sex. We put, we just, we are very, we are Don't very Don't let your wives hang out with me or let them hang out with me. Look, <laughs> came back from November, just, just changed, um, <laughs> changed in some ways. But, uh, like we, he, because he is so reserved and he's yeah. always been reserved. I've gotten an element of reservation yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and sometimes, and I don't mind it. Sometimes I'm like. Let's 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 be a little little and honestly the podcast he he the evolution of him is very interesting and I think that's a component of marriage where you can see how the other yeah. person influences you because yeah. a lot of my reservation is his influence on me mm-hmm. and a lot of his like 
his new hairstyle, like all of the things that he is now. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things I won't take credit for most of them. I'll take like 98% credit, (laughs) but, um, is, is me, me as a partner, him being comfortable and, and vice versa. Like you, you need to have that in partnership. So that kind of leads me to another question in terms of what, when you, because you've t- you've mentioned that you you counsel uh, couples mm-hmm. before they get into marriage. Mm-hmm. What is your a piece of advice that you feel that you give on a regular basis in terms of it doesn't matter who it is, just something that you find is just universal in marriage that every couple should go into it knowing. Um, I'm gonna have to say two things. Uh, one is to remember that. Everybody, so I have on a pair of glasses and literally every single person has on a pair of lens, lenses, glasses in which they see the world. Mm -hmm. And that's literally how you grew up, things that have happened to you, whatever. You look at the world through your experiences Mm -hmm. and everybody's different. And 99.9% you marry somebody who is totally, they look at the world totally different than you do. And so when you come together, you have to keep that at the forefront Mm -hmm. and say, okay, you know what? Let me respect and value what they're bringing to the table and what they're saying, even if you don't agree with it, to be able to at least listen and say, okay, well, I understand where you're coming from, but this is how I see it. And then learn how to come to a mutual place. And then that's number one. And so number two is you have got to remember that you're on the same team. Like whatever Mm. happens, you're literally on the same team. So, you know, issues that you have to attack, decisions that you have to make, you know, you're on the same team and you have to come approach anything as, as if you're on the same team. Yeah. Fighting for the same thing. Yeah. No, that was a, that was a big theme. Um, I believe it was, the, last, the latest podcast you and Ian yeah. had a conversation about it. Yeah. No, no, that, that, was, that was the one that um, I only heard a little bit of it because Jessica tried to put her, she was playing it out loud and then she tried to switch to her headphones. Because it didn't like, look like he was paying attention. He was on his phone. So I was like, oh, he's not even listening. So let I me. Was, I was multitasking. Because <laughs> I got the two kids, they're just rambunctious, making different noises. And then he was just over in his own world. So I was like, I'm going to zen this on my own. And yeah. he's like, you turn it off? <laughs> yeah, it's multitasking. Um, so I re- I'm really fascinated, um, because a big, uh, inspiration for me finally being, um, willing to start, uh, go to Jess about starting our podcast was you and, and Kathy starting yours, mm-hmm. um, and listening to it and seeing it like just how much fun it was. Yeah. Um, and, and just kind of how you can. It's really just like a release, like a platform. Yeah. Just it's like, like for us, we kind of say it's like our built-in date night because yeah. it's just us. The girls are in bed because we record at night. And y'all talk um, about so many different things. Mm-hmm. And it literally, I, I love the unity that y'all have and the banter and the, it's so fun. And I mean, and even like making the drinks and I mean, everything from A to Z is just awesome. So oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, what was, what was the driving uh, force behind you? Like, what was that? How did you get to the point where you say, okay, I want to start a podcast and then, okay, I want to start a podcast with my friend and then, oh, this is what we want to talk about. What was all that like for you? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, Be sure to mention the original name that I was. Oh yeah. Let me say that. So um, I, one of the things that keeps me going as a mom and an entrepreneur is I have literally, and Jess, I know you do this too, pre pandemic. I put in my calendar girlfriend weekends. Yes. It's non-negotiable. We were supposed to go to Asheville. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, It's like going down. Asheville is my spot. We, and I was so up for that because we were really going to do it big at the Grove Park Inn, but um, that's still happening. It's going to happen. But I, I really, I put that in my schedule. So on um, one of my girlfriend weekends, just really walking and being outdoors and talking to a friend, my, my girlfriend who had been married. She, she was coming up on 25 years. I was like, we just started talking. We were just talking about marriage and just all the stuff you've learned. And, um, we got on the topic of sex. That's, 
we I'm always talking about that. She is. It's um, amazing. It's, it's so much fun. <laughs> and I mean, listen, let me back up the train a little bit. Back it up. Choo choo. Sorry. God <laughs> created sex. And I cannot understand why, like when you're in the world and you're not married, like all you want to do is talk about sex and have sex. Like that's all teenagers are thinking about. That's mm-hmm. all like you think about in your twenties and all that. Like, I, uh, when I was sex. a teenager. Oh, <laughs> sit your I was, silence. I was, Only about to have it drop us some- if you don't, I'm I was thinking about Bible study. <laughs> lies, <laughs> the lies, and the uh, I'm just saying, and Locked Bible study. But he got two kids. This I'm talking about when I was a teenager. <laughs> okay, did you used to have a crush on Beyonce? No, you said that you had a brief moment where you like Beyonce. No. That means you were not thinking that about is, no Bible scriptures. That is not of God. <laughs> what for God so loved the world, He sent Beyonce. <laughs> But no, I agree with you. Sex is such a it's it's such an uncomfortable yeah. conversation topic, mm-hmm. and it shouldn't be like because right. when you think about anybody who has children, for the it's like okay, well, I mean, there are multiple ways you can have kids, right? But ninety percent of the time, <laughs> it's via sex. So right. it's like I was thinking about that recently, where I was like, I have a kid, so people are automatically in my sex life because by default you understand yeah. that I had to have sex, yeah, with him. <laughs> To have, this, to have this kid. And I have two. So at least you can understand that I've had sex at least four times. Like the, pra- the, the practice rounds and then the two that made the kids. So it's like, I don't understand why sex is such a taboo and uncomfortable conversation. But being around you, it makes sex a comfortable yeah. thing to say. Because like, you know, sometimes you'll avoid saying sex and you'll be like intimacy, intercourse. Yeah. Like, 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 why, like, why do you have to be diplomatic about something yeah. that needs to happen? One, to procreate the world. And two, God designed it for married right. people but because there's so much sin and stuff associated to sex right. and it's like people are uncomfortable and it's like is, don't um, talk about it what is there a question in there somewhere oh i didn't ask no what? she was just backing me up oh, i was okay. Okay. yeah I didn't. don't come for me <laughs> stay in your lane sir it sounded like yeah. a ramble. mr bible study it sound like a ramble to me so it's it like the, the moment you get married is like shh. but anyway um i was walking with a friend and we're having this conversation. We're talking about sex. And she's like, I, I was like, I want to talk to all my girlfriends about this. Like what we're talking about right now, like everybody needs to talk about because we were just, we were, it started off with, we were on our way on this girl's trip and she was like, Hey, can we stop at the store? I want to get some lingerie. And I was like, lingerie? Like, okay. oh dang, I ain't done that in a while. And like, she's I'm been recycling. married for so long. Yeah. So, um, our original podcast theme and name was Married and Having Sex. Which I loved. Yeah. I was I, like, yes. I had a 80-something-year-old woman tell me I need to keep that name. She was like, you need to keep Look, that name. when you hit 80, so there, there's <laughs> a certain age demographic. I swear you hit it. And you don't give anything about anyone's opinion, <laughs> about anyone's thoughts. You're just like, let's be ratchet. like yeah. that. And I'm... <laughs> I want to experience that while I'm still young to appreciate Mm -hmm. it. Like, I don't want to be Betty White before I'm just like, have all the sex you want. Like, I (laughs) want to be prime and and not look back and think about it. But that I just I just need to say that I appreciate (laughs) her. Yeah. So um, that that's that's really where the intent of the podcast came from. I had no idea what I was doing. Like, I had no idea. It was a lot of Google you know, her husband helped me um, learn how to even edit a podcast, how to get it on. I mean, everything. I learned everything from scratch. And so it honestly built me up. I was like, if I can do this, I can do anything. I mean, let's go. So um, I've really I've just really enjoyed it. And it's become much more than um, it's really just a space, a safe space for women. It's involved into um, we have a community on Facebook mm-hmm. where we have some Good times. Yeah. Um, usually on the last Thursday of the month, I have girls night, ladies night. And we, it's over Zoom and we just talk about all kinds of things. And I always do giveaways. 
last time. I got time. a noonday bracelet. I should have worn it. I'm going to wear it tomorrow. You actually missed the last time we were giving out little kinky stuff. So you oh, missed man. that. You know, but. on the topic, I feel like you should have a sex <laughs> retreat where it's just women who talk about, like, we just all get together and we just. We should we do talk that. About intimacy for those of you who are uncomfortable. <laughs> intimacy. Um, yeah. I I definitely appreciate that because, like you said, you get married and then it's like sex becomes taboo Mm -hmm. and you go into it and you don't really know all of the things that are that you should expect Mm -hmm. and you you kind of set your expectations lower and society kind of makes it seem like oh like you're married and it's just supposed to be blah like and and it kind of idealizes the idea of being single and which is why people want to be single Mm -hmm. as opposed to getting married because marriage looks boring yeah. Marriage looks plain. It's like, oh, I and committed it's really my life. Not. It's not. It's a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah. Um, unlike some people in this room who think marriage is difficult, um, <laughs> other people think marriage is great and it's not difficult and it's it's a lot of fun. But it takes work. It, where's the Bible and the, the offering <laughs> container? Because marriage does take work. Yeah. So as so I guess I'm I while we were speaking, I got this question, what what is your dream? I don't want to say job, but what is the dream accomplishment for you as a mom, as an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. as a mompreneur? What is the thing that you are aspiring to accomplish to look back and say, wow, I, I did it? Honestly, um, for me, I love working that nine to five too as well, but if I look, if I am at the end of my life and I'm looking back, I want to really just know that I made an impact on some on people's lives, not just one, but multiple people. Mm-hmm. I want them to be like, you know what, Jacynthia changed my thinking. She she um, pushed my marriage to a new level. She um, helped me, you know, get rid of some things that I was holding on to. Like I want people to say, my life was changed um, through this. So through knowing her through hearing what she had to say. So that that's that's what I would say. Yeah. That's awesome. And, um, but David, before we move on, though, uh-oh. could you just say the word sex? Can you say I have sex? Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you. Do you see the, pic- do you see the pictures behind me? All the good things there and are, the bad things. There are small, baby. small human Let's beings. Let's talk about sex. Do I have to mute you to your mic? Sex. I'm surprised I know all the words because I think that song came out the year I was born. So I don't know why I know all the words, but I do know it. Um, you know what, what's interesting? Uh, you still haven't we, said it. We've got, we've got like 90 seconds. I think what's interesting <laughs> is that um, there's this, uh, for some reason, there's this idea that I have a problem discussing sex um, or talking about it, And I don't. It's just not something that I, that I offer up. Mm. And, and and when I'm in spaces, the kind of people who I hang around with, that's just not our vibe. So it's not that um, I'm uncomfortable or I'm like squeamish talking about sex. It's just not something that um, I talk about well, among my, like my friends. Sex? Yeah. How many times do you have sex? How many times would you like to have sex a week? Um, I don't know that I have a number on it. Uh, we, we have. Interesting. We have. um <laughs> So what's what's interesting is uh, that's been probably one of the biggest hurdles for us to 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 get over um, in our in our marriage when we were um, (laughs) when we were when we were we were dating, we had we had a lot of sex. Uh, Jesus saves. (laughs) Mom, There's I'm sorry. No Mom, I'm sorry. Um, we no, we had, we had a lot of sex, and then uh, as we we got further into our marriage, um, there was there was a bit of a drop off, and I know that it it didn't come from from Jessica. It was it was on my side. So uh, that's something that she's expressed to me on on a number of occasions, and it's something that um, here recently I've been really intentional about. Um, one, letting her know that she's desirable, because you don't, you never want your partner to feel like it's them. That's yeah. the issue. Yeah. Uh, so, and I, I, I do that various different ways throughout the day, just letting her know that, that I desire her, but no, a it's, lot it's, of those ways are annoying, but <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, it's, uh, it's something that, uh, we could, we could definitely stand to have more, more mm-hmm. of it. Uh, it's a little tougher now with two kids at home, um, yeah. dur- during a pandemic, usually it, it's always at night. And then when we're both, you know, just like flat out tired or whatever, but no, I, I enjoy having sex. It's something that we're, 
um, having more of. And I think, uh, fun, in- interestingly enough, uh, since we've, we've been having it more, I, I feel like we've been, we've been closer and then our, it, our relationship has been better, but, that. but, we gotta but we got we to gotta take a break. Oh, so we'll right. be, we'll pick right back up. All right. So we're back. Um, <laughs> we're talking about sex. So I said this off camera, but I want to make one thing clear. Okay, ma'am. <laughs> You are the guest. We ask the questions here. I can't. But that's right. how you can see the skill of her mom, mompreneurship. <laughs> that oh, she come, does, come she on, my, come on, our, into in my, a, a, a sexual release in counseling my, session. In my house. I really think you need, to, she you need ate, to focus on being a marriage, after she, a Christian marriage look, and sex look, counselor. Look, uh, I'll receive that. I'm speaking. You're speaking? All right, Kamala. <laughs> She's going to come over here, eat my wife's food. Which was amazing, by the way. Of course Thank it was. Stop. Of course it was, but thank you. Um, but that's family. Look, <laughs> let me do the bit. Do the bit. What bit? You don't have a bit. I'm gonna be asking, que- uh, asking questions. I'm not one of your subjects, okay? All right. She's already. I'm sorry, yet. David. But to answer your question. <laughs> um, yes, I, I do enjoy sex. Um, no, it's not something that I uh, I talk about all willy nilly. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is weird because I feel like society sets you up mo- to think men, men, men are men pro- saving. Well, I will say this: men probably do. There are majority of men probably do. It's probably like a badge of honor to talk about how many women they've had sex with or the different things that they do. That's just not me. I've always considered myself cut from a bit of a different cloth. Mm-hmm. So that's not I something. Can't take cloth. That's not something that I uh, that I do. But by no means am I ashamed of my sex life with my with my wife. I'm no by no means ashamed of my wife. We have. Great sex. Um, I let her. Do you feel like you're good at sex? Yeah. Uh, We're a little. We're a little. uh, (laughs) I I would say. um, I get better. I would probably be better if we were more consistent. Mm -hmm. And that and that's with anything, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, with any with any art, right? Like the more you do it, the better you get at it. Yeah. Um, So when you have those lulls, sometimes when you pick back up, it's like, oops. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, gotta get back. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, uh oh. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but, um, no, I, I yeah, I, I do think I'm, I'm good at it. Uh, and that's, and you know, what's funny that you asked that, and this is definitely way off the rails of, of Mompreneur March, but, uh, this is part of her Mompreneur This is, no, no, and, and it falls in line with, with what she does. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm going along with it. Uh, that's actually something that Jessica asked me periodically mm-hmm. is like, she'll ask, like, are you satisfied with our mm-hmm. sex life? Do you wish, do you want to try anything different? Do you want to experiment? Um, and that's great. And I, and I think that speaks to why she, she and I are just so compatible is because things I wouldn't even wouldn't even think of Mm -hmm. like she's already like she's thought of it times like a million she's like already like a hundred hundred thoughts ahead of of that she's very unique she is and um and and it's because of that that um that kind of feed i kind of feed off of that and it's like via osmosis that i I have i start thinking about certain things that i that i normally wouldn't so to her to her credit that is something that she asked me like it's not on a schedule but periodically she'll just ask me like, you know, how do you feel about our sex life? And I think that's healthy because, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk about it. I wouldn't be the one to bring it up. Yeah. Right. Cause in my mind, I'm like, okay, if we're having sex, okay, I guess everybody's happy, but that's not mm-hmm. necessary. It's not always that, that cut and dry and black and white. So I think it's, um, I think it's great that that's, that's one of the great things that she does. Yeah. I do. I do find it interesting how you found a way to turn this into your podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, so and uh, I, I think that's cool. I think that's really cool. No, I'm not going to let that happen. <laughs> it's already so no. She's over there, like she's have, solo, and then we're here, I have, and now I feel like we're in a counseling. No, session. we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. So, because yeah. we've got a limited amount of time. Um. And then I lost the train of thought. Uh, no, here we go. Here we go. Mine, no, here we go. No, here we go. Question. So. Um, there was a New York Times article mm-hmm. that came out. I don't know if you watched the episode that we discussed it, but it basically profiled three moms, um, in a pandemic and through the through a stretch of the pandemic, mm-hmm. um, who were working moms and they were in different st- circumstances. So one had uh, she was working from home. She had two daughters with her husband. One was autistic. The other one was was in middle school, and her husband worked out of the house. The other one uh, was a single mom uh, with no benefits was um had a son who was i think homeschooling 
uh, or maybe he was hybrid, was basically trying to mm-hmm. having to figure out how to make sure that he could still get his education with with her still being able to go to work because she wasn't able to work from home, didn't have benefits. And then there was another mom who she and her husband both, both worked in mental health. He was working three jobs. She worked one, was it part-time? Um, yes. but, and they had one young daughter, but for some reason she got stuck with, with all the responsibilities. So if you look at a lot of the statistics, um, a lot of the, the, the jobs that have been lost have been jobs of women. Uh, a lot of women who have felt pressured to remove themselves from the workforce because they're their care to main care, caretakers for their for their children. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious what effect, if any, mm-hmm. um, has the pandemic had on you in your marriage? And have you felt mm-hmm. like because you're in so many different things, mm-hmm. um, pressure to step back? Because, I mean, your husband's a pastor, right? Mm-hmm. Like he shepherds a church and there's an enormous amount of responsibility um, that comes with that and a number of things that he's probably dealing with when you have to, you know, pray over people and hear people's things and, and whatnot. So what one has it affected you guys and has it affected you? And if so, like, what has it been like for you and how have you, how have you kind of navigated your way through that? Um, honestly, it, it has affected us. The very first thing I think that happened, um, for us Cause our girls, they were going, we, they were in school part time. Um, and I was really enjoying that. And that was like my two, three days to get everything done. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, what it really did was just slowed me down. Mm. I literally, um, at that time, right when the pandemic hit, I was in real estate, like going full blast, um, I was also subbing at a high school because I was a Bible study group leader for um, teenage girls. And a lot of them went to this little charter school. So I was like, I want to spend more time with them. And of course, I got into subbing and that allowed me to be there with them all day. And we'd have lunch together and and different things. and, And a lot of things unfolded there. So I was just really, um, I was just super busy. So the pandemic was like a halt and um, I slowed down immediately. Um, And and at that time we actually had a foreign exchange student that was living with us. So, um, so you don't like any space on your plate, do you? (laughs) Like none. None. (laughs) Um, But it immediately slowed things down. It was like, Oh, we don't have as many church responsibilities. Um, I was involved in, the community, uh, a community club there that I was leading some youth stuff with. And it allowed me to just pour into my girls. So I, I know for my personality, I need to like plan stuff out. I need to be doing something. So I just took all that energy and put it into my kids at that time. So it was like, I made them an agenda. I was their little teacher that lasted all of a month. Um, <laughs> Better than me. I made it a week. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I will give credit to my husband. You know, when he started to see that I was kind of getting a little burnt out and needed a break, he would pick it up and he would, and I credit to him, you know, he didn't pick up with what I was doing. He, he did it his mm-hmm. own way. And I was sure. like, cool. Cool. They're still learning. That's great. Um, and he's a little bit more harsher than I am. Um, so. You gotta lead we, with the muscle. Is that a Greensboro you gotta college lead, Gotta lead with the muscle. <laughs> <laughs> we, we transitioned well with the pandemic. We just piggyback off of each other. Um, and we, whoever is the strongest at the moment is who gets to lead. And I'm very thankful for that mm-hmm. because it allows room for us to, do what we have to do outside of the family. Um, so yeah, that's, and I, I, I do feel bad for some of the moms who have been really struggling mm-hmm. during this time and families in general, cause it, it's been hard. It has been. Yeah. I just love your face. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I going to ask? Oh, what was I going to ask? What was I going to ask? Don't touch um, me. I don't know you. <laughs> Get your boy. So I want, I want you moment. have you have the you're fortunate. You're a mom of of a young man, and you're mm-hmm. also a mom of two young ladies. Mm-hmm. So obviously, the impact that you're going to have on your overall as an umbrella, their mother, but the mm-hmm. impact you're going to have on them is different. Mm-hmm. So as a mom, as an entrepreneur, as a wife, what what do you want 
when your son is 25, when Elias is 25 and he's reflecting back on your momship, mm-hmm. what do you Motherhood. want? I like momship better because it's, it's sailing across water. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Imagery. Stay in your lane. Um, for him, what do you want him to look back and say, this, this, is, this is who my mom is. This is what she taught me. And this is how I'm applying that to my life. And, and the same goes to your, your, your daughters. Yeah. Um, I would love for my son to look back and say, my mom was so strong. Like she always made a way out of no way. Like I could, my biggest thing is I don't ever want to be told no. And not that I can't handle no, but, um, just, I don't ever want to be told I don't want to tell my kids, oh, we can't afford this or that, like things that I truly want them to experience or do. Um, I remember taking my son on his first, well, it wasn't his first plane ride, but a ride that he could actually remember. Mm -hmm. Um, Across, we went to California so that he could see his aunt and uncle for his spring break. And I just remember the joy and excitement that he felt just doing something like that for the first time and experiencing a new city and just, and I want him to look back and say, Oh, my mom, like she made that happen. You know what I mean? And, um, and I want to do more of that with him. I actually, because the age gap is so big between Mm -hmm. them, I do a lot of things with him alone. Um, things that are more fit for his age. And then I kind of separate the girls. So into that, But um, for my girls, you know, my biggest struggle with them, and it's probably because they are girls, is I I have to fight myself every day to hold back, not to try to make them like me, but to appreciate who they are. Mm -hmm. Um, My oldest is, she's total opposite of me. She's very sensitive, very, um, she needs a, adoration and you know just that drive to keep going she needs to know that you're okay with her and I often look at her and I'm like I just want to shake that out of her (laughs) but I'm like you know what this is a part of who she is Mm -hmm. and let me help her cultivate that and not try to force it out of her um help her to find it in an in an avenue that's safe not from you know so my girls, I just, I want them to look at me and say that my mom was gentle with me, that she guided me. So it, it is different between boys yeah, and girls, definitely. but, um, yeah, I do. I love, I want my son to say that I'm strong and I want my girls to say that I'm gentle. So, <laughs> so, uh, last question. Yeah. Um, and this is more of uh just kind of, kind of let you give you the mic and let you run with it, but I'll, I'll kind of set the table for you. So uh, I do follow you on, on social media. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't help but to because you post a lot. That's not a, that's not a slight. <laughs> you do, um, I, but you, you post a lot. I, I see a lot of you. And um, I think you may have talked about this evening, talked about like seasons, like knowing when one ends and when, when another one's beginning. Um, and I think and I know that you're very transparent about growth that you've mm-hmm. experienced, like old, you know, it's like shedding old skin, so to speak. So uh, I know that. To be an entrepreneur, it's almost impossible to want to always be comfortable because a lot of the success and magic happens outside of your your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So um, being that this is Mompreneur March um, and we already talked about how uh, women have been, you know, the most affected of of the pandemic. uh, Just talk a little bit about, you know, kind of just give some words of encouragement about how important it is to kind of flee your, your comfort zone. Um, what it's like to kind of, you know, get the courage up to do that. Um, and just kind of talk about how, um, someone who has all these business ideas or has, has all these things that they want to do, you know, how they can go about doing that even, you know, in a, in a pandemic. Yeah. Um, I, have always been someone who has been comfortable outside of the com- comfort zone. Um, I think everybody has a comfort zone and um, I like, it's invigorating for me to get outside of it and push the envelope in that way. 
But if you're on the other end of the spectrum with that, um, you know, choosing one thing at a time to get outside of your comfort zone. So uh, I have a friend who um, really enjoys, she speaks over the phone. She does a lot of uh, like calls over the phone. And I'm like, you know what? You need to do a Facebook Live. And she's like, I can't, I can't, I don't want to be on camera. And I'm like, just, I like, I love just pushing people just to do it that one time. I'm like, how about I do it with you? Mm -hmm. And we just have a conversation and you can see how easy it is. Um, And I remember the first time she did it and she was like, I literally thought I was going to throw up. But when I got done, I was so proud of myself and she held on to that for so long and it made it easier for when the next new thing came along. She was like, Oh, I could try this. I could do this. So I would say that, um, if you are in any way trying to grow yourself, get outside of your comfort zone, just pick that one thing, grab a friend that's going to push you and encourage Mm you. And just go for it. Just force yourself to do it. Even if it, if, even if you're doing it for two minutes, just do it. Because when you get on the other side of it, you're going to feel better. Um, and you're going to be proud of yourself. Um, your other question was if you... I think you... That was you it. Touched. That was yeah, it. Yeah, you okay. kind of... It was all kind of... I actually have one, one last question. Okay. <laughs> do you... How do you define entrepreneur or mompreneur? And do you consider yourself a fitting piece of that definition? Yeah, you know, um, I don't know the textbook definition of entrepreneur, but I think entrepreneur is just anyone who is willing to um, make money outside of a nine to five. And a mompreneur is someone who has a little bit more of a challenge because being a mom is a full-time job. And if you have a full-time job, so that's two things. And then you're adding more things. So, um, I, I think it's, I think mompreneurs have an advantage over other people because we are natural networkers, the general mom. You know, you got to talk to teachers, you got to, you know, set up play dates with friends or you got your friends who have kids and, you know, you're in these circles. So to me, if you're already doing those things, it's easier to be a entrepreneur. I know what your other question was, David. It was the mom or someone who's looking to get into entrepreneurship or something like that. Uh, yeah. Um, but my advice to that is just, there's always money to be made Mm -hmm. product customer and you can be the bridge, but go with something that you're passionate about because that's going to drive you and that's going to keep you going. Mm. Um, so that would be my advice, but to, but I, I think even though mompreneurs have more on their plate than, you know, just the regular entrepreneur or, you can be a full-time entrepreneur. You can be a part-time, quarter-time entrepreneur or whatever, but mompreneurs have more on their plate, but I think it's easier for them when you really get down to it because you can fit it into your natural life as you as you go along. And that's what I do. So Cool. Because moms are amazing. They yeah, are. They are. Well, thank you, Ms. Ba- Mrs. Bailey. We appreciate you and, and enjoyed having you on. Uh, where can people find you on social media? Oh my goodness. Um, I am most often on Instagram. I love to post encouragement there and I'm at just Cynthia underscore Bailey. And then, um, of course on Facebook, um, if you are married or thinking about getting married or engaged, you should come join our, um, married ladies community on Mm -hmm. Facebook. Our group is a lot of fun. We often talk about sex. I remind the women to go have sex, to kiss their she husbands. <laughs> she posted the um, a massage tutorial. And I was like, there are going to be a lot of babies in December. <laughs> Just messing around, teaching people how to massage. Wait yeah. for it. Um, and then um, also our website is Married and Having Fun. Um, all of my links and all that is there. I have day retreats once a month that are amazing you don't have to they, be married to oh come my to gosh those. 
they will do change yourself your life. a favor do yourself a favor <laughs> and, and and attend yeah so our next one is in march march 13th I and you're hosting it right um you it'll will. be at my friend jennifer's house oh yeah. so they're small and intimate and they're life-changing yeah so i might have to mosey on down to dumb <laughs> so uh yeah, so we'll have all the links uh, that Cynthia just dropped. Uh, if you're and on if YouTube, if you need life coaching or marriage coaching, definitely reach out to her. Yes, yeah. you saw her, you saw how she flipped the script on us just now. So, <laughs> yeah. so you've um, already seen a preview. I would have loved to go deeper, but I already see I'm going to have to have y'all on my podcast. Oh yeah, um, so, yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> all the links in the description on YouTube, and then we'll also host, post them in the uh, in the show notes for those of you who will be who are listening to this via um, audio podcast. Um, this is my favorite part of the show because now I solicit. So for everybody who's been watching, uh, we appreciate you. We finally found out who you were, see who you are, see Tucker. Uh, hey fam, and we love you. <laughs> and um, to everybody else who's commented, uh, there are there are I think the most comments ever on our last uh, podcast, which was uh, about Clubhouse um, and and whether or not everyone having a sounding uh, or, or a platform to speak is is dangerous or not. It was really good. Go ahead and check it out if you haven't. Um, I think it'll it'll pop up here at the end of the video. Um, we're on social media. Connect with us there. We're on Instagram, R U S H D V I B E S, and then we're also on Facebook, Rush Vibes. Uh, if you're listening to us uh, on Apple or Spotify, go ahead and leave a review uh, and leave a five star rating, preferably, um, or you know whatever you want. Just leave something uh, five. because just uh, leave five. the more that the more ratings we get and the more reviews we get, obviously, the more uh, will show up in in feeds and what um, people are searching for new things to listen to. And chances are, if you're listening, someone who is like minded and who you associate with is likely to get something out of it too. And we just had a really bomb episode uh, with Jacynthia. And I think um, this is kind of like the precursor to, to the rest of the conversations we're going to have this month. So we've got a lot of dope content coming out. So we definitely want uh, to reach as many people as possible. So did I miss anything? Oh, support, su- just- support the channel. <laughs> uh, we're on Cash App, dollar sign, R-U-S-H-D-V-I-B-E-S. Yeah. We, we appreciate you guys who have donated and, and um, contributed. We appreciate it. It's, it's going to a, to a good place. Check um, out Married and Having Fun. Yes, check and out Married. And also Noonday and... Well, all those links are, are going to be in our who, 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 in our, in our our thing. What's her brand? Never mind. Okay, we'll she's, put she's, it in the okay, show notes. So, uh, you're going to start hearing some music. <laughs> so uh, we appreciate Clothing you. Grace. There you Clothing go. Clothing Grace. We, uh, we appreciate everybody. We love you guys. We're still in a pandemic, so wear a mask. Wash your hands. Social distance. Way too Be safe. Vibe tribe, we're out. We'll see you on the next one. Way too fucking stop me now. I done came. Way too fucking stop me now. Stop me now. Stop me now. Yeah, I done came. Way too fucking.